Hi, it's Anna. I'm Dominic and welcome back to Philly Swiss. In this second part, we'll be tackling three topics. One, we'll be looking in detail the questions you need to ask yourself before you decide to get yourself a dog or a puppy. Number two, if you do decide to get yourself a puppy, what are the benefits of going to puppy school? And number three, how and when to socialize your puppy. Questions to ask yourself before getting a dog. If you have a live-in partner, living with your family, or have a roommate, did everyone consent to getting a dog? If you're renting, do you have approval from your landowner to have a dog in your home? Do you live close to a dog park or green areas where you can take your dog out for a walk, play, poop, and pee? Do you have enough time to spend with your dog, especially for training and playing? Are you financially prepared to cover not only the monthly expenses and unexpected and unplanned expenses? Do you have or can you make space in your home for all of his or her needs? Is there a vet nearby for checkups and emergencies? These are just some of the basic questions, although they're very important to ask because, for example, if you are renting, um, like us, we actually had to ask for the approval from our landowner if we could have a dog in our apartment. And also, it wasn't just about what, uh, ha what pet it is, it wasn't just if it's a dog or a cat. If it's a dog, there are different types of breeds that are allowed in apartments and there are those that are not allowed. And this is basically by law because what you are considering is also the welfare of your pet if the dog is a big dog, is your apartment uh, big enough to be able to let him run around? Is he going to be in a lead? If he's going to be in a lead, how much further can he go before it becomes too small for him? So for example, Snickers can grow up to 30-35 centimeters, so he's allowed in our apartment and that's why we were allowed to have him uh, as part of our family. Also, for example, if we look at the um, the time question if there's enough time to spend with your dog especially for training and playing now depending on the breed that you decided maybe some breeds uh, require more attention some of them are very stimulative that require a lot of uh, interaction and uh, sometimes iq uh, puzzles and toys are not enough so you will need to spend some time maybe doing tug of war, uh, chasing each other, uh, doing different tricks just to keep the bond uh, stronger and always enhance it. And you always need to be able to show him that you're a pal, but also you're the leader, that you can be able to tell him, I am going to tell you now what you can do. And if you do it, you get a treat. Looking at another question now, this is more towards potty training. Uh, do you live close to a dog park? So the dog park is always beneficial uh, if you can let them play around, they have agility courses, um, you can walk to the dog park and then let him roam. Uh, can he poop there? Can he pee? For example, here where we live, there is no dog park, so we can just walk him around and then if there's a green area, then he can uh, do his business there. But there is no actual park, although when my family and I were li living at Geneva, there they had about maybe a, a park or two already for dogs and that was really nice. So I was quite surprised that in our area, there isn't a single one. So uh, maybe someday they'll decide on doing that, but for now, that's all we have. Other big spaces for us to use are the ones for um, the puppy school. And the puppy school is nice, but of course you have to go according to the program. Another very important question, are you financially prepared to cover not only monthly expenses, but the unexpected or unplanned expenses? Now what we're looking at, for example, is if you are getting a puppy, how many shots has he had or she had? with the breather or um, basically what is left over for you to cover. Now when we got Snickers, Snickers already had his first shots with the breather but we had to go to the vet as well and uh, do his next set of shots and that's basically what you see as a recurring theme. There will be vet visits, 
um, maybe at the beginning you'll think okay he might have caught a cold or he is coughing too much or that he vomited maybe something and you're not familiar was it food was it something else and this is basically uh, two times that's happened to us and it turns out nothing he's a happy and healthy little male puppy who is just very active and likes to uh, uh, try everything using his mouth so it's not like uh, it's worrying but these are just accumulative expenses that may or may not have been needed but it may happen another question is uh, in relation to the type of breed that you're going to buy for example do you have the space for your dog at home now if your apartment or your home does not have enough space to have a crate uh, or maybe you even got the wrong crate that's uh, something you have to look further into because a dog does need the space to roam around not just to sit and wait for you to let him out he is uh, a living creature that will need to be able to have some freedom. So you will have, for example, like us, he gets a toy maybe every week or every other week depending on how often we go to the pet store. And we've now basically had to have three dedicated boxes on the shelf for him. One for his hygiene products, one for his toys, and one for his um, pee pad trainers. You might have to consider where you're going to store all of his stuff and then that's only for storage that's not including where you will put his crate for example we also got a playpen because he's a puppy he doesn't need uh, so much space but he does take up most of the living room already but we've connected his playpen to his crate so that he's free to go in and out of his crate he has a basket he has a bed inside the crate he has his toys, his food and water bowl, so depending on what he needs, you will need uh, some fixtures that will stay maybe permanently there. Talking about the expenses, uh, looking at the question, uh, is there a vet nearby for checkups and emergencies? So we also know that our uh, vet clean, our vet doesn't have, you know, 24-7. So we also know where to go next that they um, suggest that we should go if they are closed. Benefits of puppy school. So when we're talking about the puppy school, um, we're looking at the bonding time, the obedience, the peers, socialization, and coaching. These are the five key benefits that I could think of from going to the puppy school. Now, in the bonding time, I remember when we went to the first time to the course, we were actually taught uh, lesson number one on how to um, shoo away other dogs just shooing them away so that our dog knows that if there is something that they don't like, they know that we can keep them safe, that we are guarding them, and that we can make those things go away. So the lesson here is having trust, um, feeling safe, and for you as well, you know where the limit of your dog is. The second benefit being obedience. Now in obedience, uh, you're looking at heel recall with a lot of distractions. Now for us in our puppy school, it is out doors and it is in an area where there are cars passing because there's a highway and then you have the planes uh, on top and you're like okay can he still hear me maybe he can't but you still have to be able to recall him so the lessons there are like discipline um, manners with uh, human interaction and dog interaction now in the third benefit that i mentioned it's about peers what i mean with peers are other puppy parents so you're looking at the fact that you are not alone when it comes to what you're experiencing um, i remember when i had to ask a question about uh, his relief period so something we noticed is that he will not do his business just in any green area um, there are times wherein he would really prefer such a clean area that there's a reason why it's a very clean area it's because dogs aren't allowed there but um, just that you're aware <laughs> um, he is very picky of where he does his business so I had to ask this question and say I do not want to let my dog just go and do his business where it's not allowed not worrisome but it's kind of embarrassing <laughs> and also uh, you feel like there are eyes watching 
you at the back of your head you have no idea if someone's gonna catch you and say hey you're not allowed to do this here so and then you're in a hurry to look for another spot for him to look for it so you are not alone for sure and um, that's what makes it even better because you get to also find out what is the best way to support your dog now that's what uh, the benefit of uh, having a coach as well is i remember in the philippines we also had our trainer and it was really good how to handle them and everything it's also good to know what is uh, now considered an updated version of uh, training your dog handling your dog for example with uh, doing his business she suggested that um, we go to one spot where whether or not um, uh, he likes that spot it will be the spot maybe that we assign to him and say this is where you're allowed now we stay here until you do your business with um, a couple of minutes if he does it it's great if not maybe he wants it maybe it, he doesn't but we have the trainer pad just in case and um, he knows already how to use that one now the other benefit that i mentioned earlier was socialization so socialization is the interaction with other puppies with other people and the lessons that are learned there are basically proper introduction interaction in a safe and controlled space safe and controlled is basically the fact that we were in such a big green area but it was fenced so no, do no dog can actually just get out of the the area and it's where you can let your dog off lead so that they can go run, run around if that is the activity in the program maybe um, the activity is to use the agility um, equipment or for example um, fry love so the free play you just take off their lead take off their collar and they're free to roam around but if your dog's fast uh, or if he's quite slippy then um, you might have a problem catching him when it's time to go back to their place but um, it's quite fun for them and uh, what we've seen so far is that of course there may be some bigger puppies or maybe smaller puppies they're the ones who actually reinforce what no means uh, what can they do so I believe there was one uh, chow chow puppy and um, he was uh, the biggest in the class and uh, Snickers was maybe the second or third biggest and Snickers loved to play with him up to the point that one time in one of the sessions the puppy just decided to lay down after playing with Snickers and Snickers was wondering oh um, what are you doing why are you just down there what has been reinforced not just for Snickers but also for me as a puppy parent as well how and when to socialize your puppy now there has been an ongoing debate on when should you really start socializing your puppy so maybe with vets it's more they would more likely lean towards but after he's had all of his shots and maybe with trainers um, it would be like okay up to 12 weeks old it's much easier to be able to train them rather than waiting later and every week that passes by is basically going to get harder so what we did is let's say it's sort of like a combination because when we picked up Snickers he already had his first shots so um, we would basically just take him outside to do his business for 10 minutes and no trips in public places like the mall or um, the airport nearby or um, just anywhere where he gets too much contact with other dogs because we are of course concerned that maybe he could catch something and he hasn't basically he doesn't have the 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 ability to ward it off after the vet appointment uh, he's had his shots again and we basically were able to start with the puppy school so he can interact with other dogs taken him for longer walks as well so to summarize what we've covered today um, we've gone into detail on what questions to ask ourselves the imperative questions to ask ourselves what to do what should we consider before we get a dog second is that we uh, have a lot of benefits when it when we go to a puppy school the last one was how and when to socialize your puppy of course it's up to you to decide when you're going to socialize your puppy um, whatever suits you the best but uh, fair warning the longer you wait the less easier the less easy it becomes to to train him 
but we have more to uh, discuss in the third part and uh, what we're covering in the next video is the continuous puppy proofing of our home and of course uh, the house training that we've uh, done so looking at tricks the treats and the methods such as the click and treat if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and if you want to see more videos like this, uh, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell. See you next time. Ade!